Future Zen number 11 is in stores now, but before you pick it up, we've got a recap of the most essential and coolest moments so far. Let's go cover to cover. 35 years into the future, Earth has been taken over by an artificial intelligence called Brother Eye. Batman plans to travel back in time to stop Brother Eye from ever being created by him and Mr. Terrific. But before he can make the jump, Bruce is critically injured. Unable to complete the mission, Bruce sends Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond, into the past in his place. The device misses the target, dropping Terry into the past seven years too late, five years into our future. The creation of Brother Eye is already happening and saving the future may now be impossible. In this future, a war between Earth-1 and Earth-2 raged in the recent past. Citizens even have ID cards identifying that they are Earth-1 residents and not Earth-2 doppelgangers. In New York, Jason Rush, one half of the hero known as Firestorm, receives a distress call from Green Arrow. Ronnie, Firestorm's other half, has been ignoring his duties as a hero and drags his feet. Firestorm responds to the distress call too late and it ends up getting Green Arrow killed. At Oliver's funeral, Arsenal confronts Firestorm about ignoring the call for help with Jason begging to be let out of the Firestorm Matrix to apologize. Ronnie flies off, keeping Jason trapped inside the Matrix for weeks to stop him from telling the truth about what really happened. Jason and Ronnie have a huge falling out and Firestorm is no more. Meanwhile, Lois Lane receives a mysterious package full of tantalizing clues, one of which leads her to a bar run by Tim Drake, aka Red Robin, thought long dead when the Teen Titans were killed during the Earth 2 war. Tim now goes by Cal and denies that he was ever a superhero. Tim's girlfriend Madison wants to believe him but can't help asking questions, even going as far as visiting her father Maxwell Payne, imprisoned for selling arms and information to the enemy during the war. Lois's next clue leads her out into the ocean to a specific set of coordinates which seemingly leads nowhere, but actually mark a mysterious island cloaked from Lois's view. But Lois isn't alone. King Faraday is following her, only to be stopped by a masked and intense Superman who marks her as off-limits. Faraday has other interests beside Lois, namely Cole Cash, also called Grifter, a man who has the ability to detect aliens, Earth-2 doppelgangers, and metahumans. Faraday coerces Grifter into returning with him to Cadmus Island, where he is asked to join a special task force with Deathstroke and a feisty young girl named 50 Sue. Grifter is being recruited as a sort of bloodhound, using his abilities to kill or capture closeted metahumans. But that's not the only nasty surprise waiting for him. Cole learns that the island houses a secret prison full of Earth-2 superhumans. Across the galaxy, Stormwatch's carrier is attacked by an unknown force calling itself the Storm. Shade assembles a rescue mission comprised of Frankenstein, seen here fighting a polar bear, Amethyst, and Ray Palmer. The team cuts across the galaxy by using the Phantom Zone as a shortcut, where they're attacked by imprisoned supervillains, including Black Adam. They make it through, but not before Frankenstein loses his arm. They find the wreckage of the carrier and the dead bodies of all but Apollo and the engineer who seem to be missing. Palmer, in a fit of ingenuity, hacks off Hawkman's arm to replace Frankenstein's lost one. Things are going fine until Hawkman wakes up. The nth metal in Hawkman's blood is miraculous. It even starts regenerating his arm. Handy. Hawkman's emergency communicator suddenly starts beeping. It seems someone from Stormwatch survived after all. Back on Earth, Jason, now no longer Firestorm, learns that his mentor developed a teleporter similar to the tech the Justice League uses. Moments after the teleporter fails its first test, Superman arrives. He's not happy about the idea of the public having access to teleportation technology. Technology Jason suspects was just sabotaged by soups. Superman also tells Jason to fix his problem with Ronnie because the world needs Firestorm. Meanwhile, Terry breaks into Mr. Terrific's building in an attempt to destroy the Brother Eye technology, but he's only able to bypass security for a few moments before he's forced to retreat. Terrific suspects espionage and goes after this mysterious Batman that isn't Batman. Terry escapes, but he loses the body of the Brother Eye cyborg that piggybacked with him from the future. Mr. Terrific is blown away by the cyborg's technology. It's decades ahead of anything he's seen before. The Brother Eye apocalypse just took another step closer. Closer. Terry isn't giving up so easily. He turns to a trio of thieves, Coil, Plastique, and The Key to help him break back into Terrificek and save the future. While Terry plans his heist, strange, seemingly unconnected events don't bode well for the days ahead. Rampage breaks a man named Ethan Boyer out of prison. 
Grifter is attacked by an invisible assailant, crop circles and cybernetic monsters are popping up in southern Asia, and there may be more to Superman than meets the eye. Can Terry destroy Brother Eye in time? Will Firestorm answer for Green Arrow's death? And why is Superman wearing a mask? Well, it looks like you're all caught up and just in time to pick up Future's End issue number 11 that's on shelves now. Hold on, I'm getting another shocking vision of the future. It's you subscribing to DC All Access so you don't miss any exclusives or timely information from the world of DC. <clears throat> that was intense. I'm an intense guy.